Welcome to another episode of the Mind Duck Books podcast. On this episode, you'll finally find out if I am a total dimwit. <laughs> And joining me is Christina. How are you? Hello. Hello, everyone. I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? I'm very excited and very worried to talk about this book because I need many questions answered. I had a bad and great time reading it. And <laughs> I'm not sure I understood it. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, I, I, I'm the one who recommended the book, so I should have the answers. Problem is, I read it a while ago and I <laughs> kind of had to like remind myself of the names of the characters and kind of like what it was actually about. But I think I remember most of it. So it will be a fun... I remember all of it, but I don't know if it makes sense. <laughs> I want to say, first of all, thanks for coming back. It's been 30 episodes since you first joined us for the Piranesi episode at uh, 32. Ah, yeah. Piranesi. And I want to ask, do you regret your life choices that you're still with us? I, on this podcast I adventure. I don't really get this. Like, I, I like this. I like talking okay, about okay. books. and Just uh, making sure because <laughs> many people get burnt out <laughs> reading, like Paul recently. Ah, <laughs> poor Paul. Yeah. I like to read. So, so far, not a problem. So I was trying to think, because we have this uh, theme going, like I like aliens and Paul likes men and all this like, toughness. So I think I'm starting to see a pattern with you. Yeah, You definitely have a good eye for uh, it's like a checklist. Unreliable characters, unusual writing style with uh, like not gimmick, but a different way to structure the book. Some kind of mystery. British writer and <laughs> something that's based And grounded in reality. Um, well, these are the books I've recommended for the podcast so far because okay, they okay. were in in some way unusual, uh, or mm -hmm. or I thought this was something you could also yeah. like it maybe enjoy or it would be interesting to talk about. I read loads of stuff. I do tend not to read science fiction that much. Aliens, mm -hmm. not not really my thing. Not okay. not all the time, but uh, okay. I can see why you might see that pattern because we've had Piranesi, we've had the mm -hmm. Twyford Code. I've also recommended uh, Conspiracy of Truths uh, mm -hmm. to you, yeah. which also fits in with that Coming like up in the unusual, uh, un unusual mm -hmm. narrative style, unreliable narrator. I just think sometimes it's more fun when you. Uh, I have to like consider the the narrative and be suspicious of what you're of your what you're told. It can be kind of annoying at times because you just have to make sure it doesn't fly over your head and you're completely out of what's happening. It yeah. definitely didn't happen to me this time. <laughs> so you, <laughs> so I asked you once if you were to choose any book that I would make Paul read and be the three of us to read. Yeah. Which would it be? And you said this one, the Twyford Code. And unfortunately, uh, Paul bailed on us. I couldn't force him to read this. He, he didn't in, like you. it at all. He didn't even try it ah. because he was very busy. Mm -hmm. He's trying. He's got other problems to worry about. And he, I've already pushed him to read about seven other books. So it was a bad timing. But I want to ask you, did you choose this for Paul as revenge for the King in Yellow? <laughs> no. <laughs> to be honest, I don't know enough about Paul to choose the perfect revenge. Should I even want to do that? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, you think he would really absolutely hate it? I don't know if he would hate it, but because on episode 42, check that one out, we were very disgruntled about Paul's favorite book. <laughs> <laughs> the king in yellow, especially Christina. <laughs> and it was very mysterious and like kind of to this guy mystical almost, like a horror. Yeah. But well, so this is also very mysterious, but in a completely different way. I felt that the 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 promise under which I was reading the book that it would somehow, you know, fill me with existential horror or or, mm. you know, make me consider things deeply i felt that book did not deliver on that i instead i was like yep you certainly tried so good job but so actually yes <laughs> i think he would hate this 
I think Paul would hate that Twyford code wholeheartedly. <laughs> you, he wouldn't be able to get through it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you just like get to the point for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah, start. but that's that's the thing. So how much how much uh, are we actually like spoiling about the book? So as usual, let's let's talk about it in general okay. and then let's spoil it completely and hopefully explain it, which I need at least some parts. <laughs> <laughs> and I think this is why people listen to us. Like, do you want to read this? Is the first part, and then if you've read it. Are there things you want to think about more in detail or are there stuff, is there stuff you missed? So hopefully yeah. we'll find those, those things. Uh, yeah, I'll do my best. So do, do you agree with me? Because like when we talked about you reading it, mm -hmm. I, I said that I don't think this can be done as an audiobook properly. Like, I don't think you can, you mm -hmm. can do that. Yeah, do you agree? I, so specifically, I only read it. I didn't listen to it at all. But I read the review that somebody really liked the audio recordings. Which there is a specific part of the story, which I will not say yet, that I'm very curious how they did it in the audiobook, because it gives stuff away. So I don't think it's a good idea to listen to this as an audiobook. And uh, I did like it. I felt like it's like i said going over my head in bad parts i was like who's where what <laughs> which <laughs> it's like a plot twist the book like so many <laughs> levels of intrigue intrigue yes so obviously you recommend this so why do you like it is, is this the main appeal that there are so many unexpected turns and so many levels to the intrigue uh yeah i think so i i think uh i when i began to read it i was just very quickly captured by well the strange spelling of certain words that was that was interesting mm -hmm. to me i found it a bit funny and and just the you know the premise behind the whole book that this is like older man who is trying to connect to the son that he never really got to know at all and uh, he's mm. had to reevaluate his life and try to find some way, I guess, be a father or explain <laughs> yeah. himself, kind of apologize to his son for why mm -hmm. he was absent from his life. And yeah, there are many angles on this, yeah. not only the mystery. Yeah, so when you read a detective story, do you guess a lot? Do you try to figure it out yourself or do you just go along with it and then um, some, at the it end? It depends. It depends. Sometimes I can kind of tell but usually that's when the story is is not that good but i can tell like yeah that's to he's totally <laughs> the true. bad guy absolutely uh but i like my m my friend sophie she is she is amazing at that like i i call hmm. her like detective sophie because she she just you know we are reading something and i'm like i think i think like it's that guy so I'm like no it's totally not it's completely different and she'll actually like solve the mystery when i had no idea what was happening oh wow yeah so for those people this book has to be amazing i think like we always say who would we recommend this to to people who read a lot of this detective stories mystery stories uh, super recommendation this is a very original yeah multi-level mystery mind that fuck. you could have a lot of <laughs> yes very much a mind duck i can see somebody having an amazing time with this i don't read that kind of story that much so i was kind of like hoping that i will get it <laughs> that was my feeling that i would not lose track of what's happening yeah I it's it's like if you read like like philip said if you read a lot of detective stories and you enjoy mysteries then I think you'll enjoy this because this is something different. It's not your typical mm -hmm. whodunit. I was very primed for trying to decode and find something for myself during while I was reading it. I couldn't find nothing. <laughs> so <laughs> so the, the book starts and there's this professor and he gets a lot of audio recordings. And then most of the book is audio recordings. And before the audio recordings, there's a preface that says the audio recordings are a little bit scrambled up. And here are some notes that you will see. And there's like a page and a list of stuff you will see. In the, I was like, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Code already. So, so like you said, there are some words uh, misspelled. So those stood out. So I was trying to find something between those misspellings. Couldn't find nothing. Of course, at the end, they tell you what you're supposed to find. And then you can see it. So that's nice. I, I am 
completely rubbish at any kinds of code, decoding stuff. So uh, what I've learned is just like, oh yeah, you want me to solve a code? I'm I'm going to wait for you to so solve it, solve it <laughs> okay, for that's me. Okay, that's my question. Like, that's, that's what, I, I am not a decoder. Um, so you can enjoy it even without trying to decode anything. Oh, absolutely. I think actually they enjoy it more because okay. I, I think you <laughs> end up... Because like, if you if you expect that like you're not going to solve it then then you don't feel as much of an idiot when you don't don't like solve it at the end because <laughs> yeah know? that's true but, but my other question was do you think it uh, is worth rereading because you might see things you miss i think so i did i think bit. so yeah. i think definitely this is a book that you can read it at least twice like if you read it the first time you're kind of swept along on this journey and and you're going along with everything that's happening getting your mind blown every every other page by all the turn of events mm -hmm. and and then at the end you're like oh right so yeah. that's why it was so weird in so many places yes <laughs> and and so afterwards i think the reread would be would be good so i think that might be an interesting second perspective and I did open it from the beginning again and I noticed immediately that the dedication for the book is in the code oh, that it's described. Is it? okay. Because there is a preface like before the beginning and it's some nonsense. And I was like, then I open it again because I wanted to check something. I was like, oh, for my brother Brian. And I can see it immediately. I was like, oh, okay, so that's nice. So some of the code stuff you can quickly spot. Uh, if you read the book and you come back to some part and of the book. And if you remember what the code was, which I don't. <laughs> I don't think this is a spoiler. So part of it is something called acrostics, which is hiding information in sentences and texts. And the most basic one is take the first letter of each word. So at the beginning, there is a, like a poem or some kind of sentence. Oh, oh and, yeah, and I see. And if you take the I first see. letters, it mm -hmm. says for my brother Brian. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is the same with the very ending of the book, oh. which I, I want to talk about uh, later. <laughs> so, yeah, it's very interesting. I have to say the first half was kind of slow. I, I couldn't get into it. Second half, I was very much into it. Did you feel like it was slow? Mm, maybe. Maybe at first it's because it, the, in the first half, he's uh, reminiscing very often. I think the the father Stephen Smith is de reminiscing very often on his childhood, what happened to him uh, and missiles, and uh, mm -hmm. how he got into this gang of of criminals, and uh, how he ended up in prison, and uh, yeah, so it takes like a long time to give you a lot of the information that you need to know before jumping into the second half where things kind of snowball and are very happening very quickly mm -hmm. and they're running and they're trying to find out mm -hmm. and yeah so very quickly something i found about the writer and uh, the book uh, the book came out the last year 2022 very recently uh, it's only 300 pages long or 380 pages almost 400 mm. pages didn't feel so long but felt slow in parts and uh, Janice Hallett Uh, born in 1969, screenwriter and UK journalist. Uh, she won an award for a book she wrote before this one called The Appeal. Have you read that one? I have not. Yeah, but I hear it's very highly like, praised yeah. as well. Yeah. So for that book, she won the award for like fiction in crime, and the award is called Crime Writers Association New Blood Dagger Award <laughs> in 2022. <laughs> I thought it was funny. She was also nominated a few times for the best mystery fiction in translation in Japan. Which, by the way, Japanese people love mystery books. They only read mystery books. They read nothing else but mystery books. I don't know why. <laughs> so I guess she might be popular in Japan. <laughs> well, then she should be popular in Japan, yeah. And uh, the book itself has got like few reviews online. It's not so popular. 
but many people have very high praise and everybody keeps saying that in the future this will be the new queen of crime fiction and it's like the new amazing this like gem do you think that's I, true <laughs> I, i i don't really like when people go ah oh, the the new queen the new king of of this genre yeah, yeah, yeah. because it's like very often be the people who are called this like ah the queen uh, colleen hoover mm. how amazing is she and it's like yeah just because it's popular doesn't mean it's good <laughs> <Hmm>. okay <laughs> uh, but it is different it is original it is a fresh take mm. on a crime story the tagline on the book says uh, the the murder of the century or something like that like let's solve the murder of the century I don't think that's a good tagline. Which murder? <laughs> there is none. <laughs> okay, there are murders, of course, but I mean, I don't get it. Uh, did you get that? Like, what, which murder is supposed to be the... Well, m missiles. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I guess there's, like, there's missiles that you have to solve it. Um, but uh, no, it's not the best tagline. Uh, I actually managed to find some reviews on the Twyford Code, like, you know, regular readers' mm -hmm. reviews. And I think what I'm I'm seeing a pattern, the people who really loved the appeal don't like the Twyford Code. Oh, okay. That they're, like, they're disappointed, they're let down. And I think I actually, I tried to read a couple of, or no, I, I read the summary of the appeal and I went like... Eh, it's not for me. I don't think I want to do this. So <laughs> that might mm -hmm. be like <laughs> that that it appeals to different different audiences, like quite quite different these two books. Mm -hmm. So before we get into like the actual plot, uh, one last thing I want to quickly mention is the connection to real life or history that actually happens. Uh, do you know about Enid Blyton? I do. I actually I I recognized the connection before I, I got to that uh, that part of the book because I loved Enid Blyton as a child. <laughs> like those children's books, they are... I read the Czech translations and uh, like looking back on it, there are parts of the books that are certainly problematic, but uh, it's mm. it, like they were mystery stories of five mm -hmm. children and a dog solving cases in this British town. And like all the children are quite posh and they're little assholes <laughs> to the local policeman <laughs> who's, uh, whose name is Goon. Yeah, his name is Goon. It's, that's, that's his name. <laughs> and he always like, ah, you damn kids and get out, get out of here. Uh, and uh, he's quite stupid. And um, I can see how that might be these posh little twats being being assholes to, <laughs> <laughs> to <laughs> working class people because that's what they they like they're all uh boarding schools and uh, mm -hmm. uh yeah so the fictional writer of the twyford code in the twyford code book is called edith twyford and the real lady who that is based on is the Ed enid blyton yeah Enid Blyton. That we just talked about, yeah. Did you see her fan page? Edith Blyton Society. It's no. like an ama amazing page. I, I, I did <laughs> I not. I I was uh, suspicious that you would you would know this, and <laughs> I thought that if you know, knew this, then I was sure you would like this website. I, I just sent you a link on WhatsApp. Enid Blyton Society. Co. Uk. Okay. Oh, how colorful. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah, this is like an old school website. Fan mm -hmm. page. I think it's specifically to like tug on your nostalgia. I think feelings. I think yeah, the the books that I loved as a child, it's the five find outers. I mm -hmm. I I haven't read any any others. Yeah. That's... I learned from those books how to possibly get away, get out of a locked room if I ever was in one. So Uh, two, two things. You need the key to be on the other side of the lock. You need the key to be in the lock. And you also mm -hmm. need a gap uh, between the like the bottom of the door and mm -hmm. the floor. Like, there, there can't be a threshold, yeah, yeah, yeah. otherwise you're fucked. I know that trick too. 
<laughs> so you need so you need newspapers and like something to turn the key yes. and then you so i i learned mm. that as a as a child which it felt like cool. Im- important information to have that I, yeah. i have retained it if the if the person leaves the key and if there is enough space under yeah. the door and if you have a paper yeah, but, and if you have a stick to push the key out but it, it felt <laughs> okay. like one of those mind blowing things like oh now i have knowledge and i am powerful <laughs> <laughs> Yes, very much. Yeah. <laughs> so another uh, real historical event that I had no idea happened <laughs> called Operation Fish, which was transporting the com- Commonwealth's gold, like Britain's gold, yeah. to Canada. Yeah. Which was the biggest operation in history as far as transporting any kind of wealth was considered. I have never heard of this. <laughs> no, I, I have not, but I assume it like could have happened lots of crazy things were happening during the war with people tr- with with It government during the second yeah, world with, war with governments trying to protect the wealth both cultural and actual physical gold reserves i looked at some photos so if somebody uh, faked this i would i completely believed it was true I, like nowadays you can't be sure anything online <laughs> is true but it seems like it's true <laughs> No, I I believe it's true. I believe it it really happened that they would want to move the gold reserves to. So that's something that's a plot point in this book I never heard of actually happened. So I was uh, kind of absolutely not knowledgeable enough to tell which parts are actually something that actually happened, something that's made up and then unreliable narrator and stuff is not true and it's true. So it was <laughs> a difficult part of this reading experience. It's just like constantly questioning everything that has been said and spending more time more time thinking about what actually happened than actually trying to think about what's like the story i don't know it just yeah kind of had a hard time at points with it okay, okay fair enough <laughs> right so i guess you definitely recommend it i anything else you'd like to say before we get into plot yeah i think like before we get to the plot before we start spoiling stuff and you like have to make a decision do i read it for myself do i discover the wonder of um uh, mm-hmm. what's her name what's her face edith twyford uh on my own yes. or or do i just listen to this wild ride that uh uh that they're going to take <laughs> me on uh, oh shit what was i going to say <laughs> <laughs> No, oh oh okay, I I remember. I remember. You kind of like, you know, like the fish on the cover, you need to go with the flow. Just just like if you decide to oh, read it, okay. just just go go with the flow of the book, let it carry you. Try to think about it, of course, like that's what it's for. Try to figure out what's happening, what is the code, why is the code. But but mm. don't get too hung up on it. Just just enjoy the mystery because you will get the answers in the end. I definitely got very hung up on many things. Like at certain points, they especially mention some kind of things. Like I, I get one point, for example, there is like an old car in a garage, and they're like, "This guy has an old car, and he also has a new car, and the old car is very strange, and it's been there. Long, uh, it's the old car, and the old car." But that's at the like, end. Oh. That's where you're getting the answers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just like an example. <laughs> just, just like even before they explained what that was uh, about they were just saying oh he visited him and there was this car and i was like i should probably know what that's about now because <laughs> it's already, almost at the end and i was like damn it so i was like trying to remember looking at where they talked about this car <laughs> so, so don't yeah, do that yeah yeah like maybe after you find out what happened you can go back and and like reread yeah. parts and so maybe make notes about puzzling things and then then you'll say that could be actually if, fun if yeah. you wrote down stuff that you found were weird and then you find out later like don't try to figure it out yourself but it will tell you at the end yeah. I, i would say 80% is answered of all the mysteries 90% maybe i will i will accept that i will believe you as as that uh, <laughs> that that is what happens but i i thought everything was answered But maybe I just because things... I sometimes I I I do that I'll say oh, okay it's meant to be a mystery and then I leave it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to listeners of uh, our podcast, I would not recommend it very much, unfortunately, because people listen to this mostly for sci-fi, and this is not that at all. And uh, amazing fight scenes, action, and in like. Uh, 
philosophical pondering about existence. None of that is here. It's so very... Don't expect the usual book that we usually read on this podcast. Despite all the <laughs> spies, despite all the the spying and code, it's quite human and down to earth, I'd say. Mm-hmm. So try it, please, for something fresh and new and don't expect anything that you usually get on this podcast. So in that case, I recommend. <laughs> If you want the usual sci-fi trash, don't read this. <laughs> this is not sci-fi trash. Okay, so plot. Let's talk spoilers. So I'll try to sum it up very, very shortly and then step by step some details I need to like discuss, <laughs> discuss, discuss. Okay. <laughs> I hope I remember enough. <laughs> Shit. It doesn't matter if you remember, I just mean more what you think. So like we said, there is a professor. His name is uh, Men- Mansfield. Yeah, Professor Max Mansfield. Max Mansfield. Mm-hmm. And he gets a message from Inspector Voliso Vo- or Veliso. Valiso. It's a strange name. Sounds quite Already you should... sounds quite foreign, the... but you know. This part I picked up on. I I was like, this is something something weird in this inspector. <laughs> <laughs> And they gave him a bunch of audio recordings because they need his expertise, which the whole time in the beginning of the book, I was like, what is his expertise? What is he a professor of? They, I, I, I think I need to correct you that they didn't give him recordings. They gave him transcripts of recordings. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. My, I was trying to say, like, you're supposed to know who this professor is. And the whole book, I don't know what he teaches or what his deal is. Or... I see. I, I, that was one of the things I like, kind of waved away. I said important. like mathematics. Yeah. Because my reason, my my thinking at this point in the book was like, I have this code, I have all these clues for the code, the guy is the expert in this thing, so he, has, he should see this thing. So what kind of things should I be looking for? Probably something in his field of expertise. What is this? Ah, yeah. <laughs> so is he studying? You, like... you don't get to find out like what his field of expertise is just it's kind of hinted at i assumed it was something to do with mathematics and mm-hmm. code breaking but i don't think that's something you actually teach so probably mathematics mm-hmm. yeah so he gets all these transcripts and the transcripts are written by a software called decipher it decipher it in capital letters which already i'm sure it's fake <laughs> <laughs> i assume so <laughs> Uh, very suspicious and the uh, bullet points of the features of the software are written in like a like a it's like a fish almost like a picture so like there's lines of uh, points like what this software can do yeah. and it can like decipher this and write this and like that and it was written like every uh, the next line was a little bit to mm-hmm. the right do you remember yeah that? yeah so so i kept staring at this when i started this book I kept staring at this page of this text and I was like, what is, there has to be something in this. I see. See, that's <laughs> one of the things that I did not pick up on because usually I get like a version from the internet and the formatting is a bit weird at times. So mm-hmm. I I didn't pick up on this as, oh, this could be strange. Is it a code? Was it a code? Did you find out? Yes. Yeah, so I spent way too much time and I found nothing. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, ne- never mind. <laughs> so that was the thing. Yeah, be the fish, and go with the flow. <laughs> okay, so already a mistake. Don't do this. <laughs> so we get a bunch of uh, notes about how the words are misspelled. The most uh, prominent is mustard. Yeah. So if if you see mustard in the text, it's must have. Mm-hmm. And the other for other words that stand out like cause. So it's like K O S, like because, mm-hmm. and gonna is like gun. Mm-hmm and all kinds of strange words. So when you were reading this and you saw these, you never stopped and you didn't try to like find something in this? No, I, I didn't. I took okay. it as, as like, uh, yeah, this is like, because this is what would happen. And this is what, what does happen when you like watch a okay. YouTube video and you click on automatic subtitles and just, it's it's not an accent that Google is familiar with. It get it, it gives mm. you like nonsense sentences and words spelled strangely. So I just accepted it as a like, mm. yep, yeah, that is a legit thing that would happen with this kind of. Okay. So mistake number two, don't read it like me. Just keep reading. Don't try to find nothing. <laughs> Definitely a mistake on my part. But yeah. I think you can find so then, the code in that if you 
kind of have the key to it by the end then you go yeah, back yeah, if you have the key yeah. which i didn't so yeah you, you need to you need to <laughs> wait until the end to so another thing is the swear words are censored which it's fun to guess the swear words <laughs> And then there is uh, different words are jumbled up, and I really liked how it's subtly told which the words were. Like you, you read something, it's kind of strange, and you remember something weird. And then a few chapters later or something, they say the words correctly, and you're like, oh, oh that. Yes. So it kind of connects. So I like that. That's kind of that's very clever. And the same happens with some audio recordings are like strangely cut off mm. or some text texts are missing or something is strange weird different and then later you kind of remember oh that's what it was so that part is well put together mm. i like that it always is set up that it comes together so that's a huge praise for this writer it has to have been very difficult to make it so complicated and at the same time come together so easily so you don't have to i never had to go back and look for it i always remembered mm. it what they meant yeah. so that's very very well made i have to say so maybe what what do you think we should say happen next i don't really know how much well, detail i should I, say i think we should introduce who the so we said there's there's a character there's there's this inspector waliso who sends the audio transcripts to professor max mansfield because it's his expertise but it's not only because of that it's because the person uh, whose audio recordings they are is actually mansfield's hmm. biological father stephen smith i for, i forgot at which point they told him at, so i think at the beginning, i think I guess. quite at the beginning like you okay that i i assume that's what it was that that they they're like you you have a connection to the hmm or oh, oh, that is something that i figured out from the start that the professor mansfield is the son of 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 Stephen I, Smith. I, I got it maybe like halfway through i, I missed it i guess yeah. <laughs> i was like who is this Stephen guy <laughs> oh is his father i was late on that so i don't know that's okay it is from his father yeah. the transcripts so we start with Stephen talking about his school years and he finds this book on a bus, the Twyford Code. Mm, but it is a very mysterious moment. There are lots of notes and papers. Because it's a bus that is never in his neighborhood and suddenly it's standing there. And he gets on and he's the only one in the bus. And there is there mm. is the book lying there and he picks it up. There's nobody around. And then he looks and he sees that no one seems to be driving the bus. Mm -hmm. And he takes the book. This is the kind of detail I completely didn't understand at the end. <laughs> yeah, because like, like, do we spoil it now? You can say any time, but I don't know. If... Because like that, yeah, that never anything. happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that part I understood. <laughs> okay, but anything else is significant. I guess it's just to be mysterious, and that's it. Yeah, I, th I think it's it's there to kind of show you that Stephen Smith is not a reliable narrator, that you shouldn't take oh, everything okay. at face value, that there is something strange happening because there are parts so, of his story, as he tells it, that ring true, that are undoubtedly this, true. This is, this is exactly my problem, why I didn't un enjoy this as much as I should have, because there are so many levels of this intrigue like plot twist that i was sure there is more than just it's not reliable either. i was sure there is something to this bus and i was like what is this bus why nothing it's just it, it's a, it's a, uh, the bus is a signal the, 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 yes. that, that like so, that's something to kind of add to the atmosphere of mystery and to let you know that so, so mistake number three on my part don't don't think about the bus it's just yeah not don't important. think about the bus <laughs> so his teacher steven's teacher is called mrs Isles or Miss Isles, Miss Isles yeah. and they and they constantly say Miss Isles in the book instead of Miss Isles because it's transcribed wrong. <laughs> so she gets the book from him because in the book is a note that says, "Deliver it to her." Yeah, but is is there such a is there such a such a note? Because poor little Stephen Smith, he's dyslexic and he can't read properly. So he, you know, she tells him, "Yeah, look." there's this note that it says it's my book mm -hmm. you should give it to me and he doesn't know if that's true because he found it mm -hmm. on a bus and he can't exactly say i know it's not your book i found it on a bus why would it be there waiting for you mm -hmm. so then strange things happen uh, we learned that the book is a children's book and there's this mysterious fictional 
writer Edith Twyford, who we already talked about, and she hides code, like secret messages in the channel stories, and Missiles is somehow obsessed with this and wants to solve it. But also, she wants to read it to the children for some reason, even though the book is banned because it's not appropriate for children. Uh, which I didn't understand this part very much, but okay. And that that like, part was that kind of annoying jab at, oh, political correctness means we're banning books yeah, by yeah, classic yeah. authors, which like that is not happening at all. <laughs> yes. Uh, so she is she's a huge fan, and the children become a huge fan of the book, and then she takes them on a trip to somewhere. I'm not really sure about this location. It's a place. Somewhere and in it's a the place UK, that's in the book. I it's, think. it's in the it's, book, and it's a place that's connected to this uh, Enid Twyford. It's in Britain. It's by the sea. There's cliffs mm-hmm. there. So it's just a place that they read about in the children's story, and Missile disappears somehow, and we don't know what happened. At this yeah, point. and and like the uh, Stephen Smith, the adult. He decides that he is actually going to find out what happened to Missiles because Mm -hmm. uh, despite the shady shit she pulled on him with the book, he really, (laughs) he really loved her. She was a good teacher. He was, he he became Mm -hmm. excited about school, which was very important for him at that time because uh, his home life was not ideal by by any stretch of the imagination. Basically, there was only his older brother at home, Colin. Mm-hmm. Uh, their father walked away, never returned. Their mother as well, several years prior to that. So it's him and his older brother, and his life kind of sucks. And but so but he's got school, which he's not very good at. But then there's missiles, and then she goes mm-hmm. missing. Mm-hmm. So Stephen Smith stops going to school and uh, gets involved with this criminal gang. Is is their name mm. Harrison? Yes, yes, I think it's. But there are multiple gangs, or maybe not. I'm not sure. It's one gang. It was one of my questions. It's one gang. Is it the same gang all the whole time? Yeah, it's one gang. But but like the, it, the it changes one... leadership after the old dude dies. Yeah, yeah, yeah that yes. One of the schoolmates also gets into the gang and he kills somebody, right? I wasn't sure about this either. I don't remember that. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Not so important. <laughs> but I, I wasn't sure if there are multiple gangs. So no. Okay. So he's obsessed with finding missiles. What happened to her? And slowly he finds more and more information about the Twyford Code. Uh, this is after he got out of prison where he was for 11 years for murder. Yeah. That we will find later what happened. But for now, he's just obsessed and he's trying to find more and more information, going to places. Uh, some of the classmates who went with him on this trip starts helping him. And yeah. tell me if I skipped something important, but they get to this tunnel where they get locked but, in. Uh, like, maybe what we need to say about the Twyford Code or like, why would there be a code in children's books? Like, why would uh, mm-hmm. this Twyford woman be doing that? It's because it's assumed that she and her husband were spies during the Second World War. And there's mm-hmm. a question, like, were they spies for the Allies? Or did they, did they turn? Did they become spies for, for the, for the Germans? And mm-hmm. that is the connection, the code and the Operation Fish that we told you about that was real. Twyford Code is not real. Operation Fish is real. That is important to stress. <laughs> that, like, yeah. like, like she was involved in feeding information to the Germans via these quite idiotic children's stories because they are they are idiotic in the in the book. Mm. You can, you see little quotes from the text, and it's yeah, the yeah. most sickening sickening shit you've ever read. <laughs> like. <laughs> oh, mommy! I, didn't think it I was have. Sickening, but... Well, it's it's the kind of okay, maybe not sickening, maybe insipid is a better a better word for it. Okay. Like, mommy, I have dirtied my dress. Oh no, Lucy, have you? Well, <laughs> you must be a good girl and go and get cleaned up. That that kind of sugary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that was not that was not like a direct quote. That's just the the vibe you get when you read yes, these little paragraphs. Um, yeah. Yes. So this is all supposed to be a code for the Germans to tell them fake 
question mark informations about the Operation Fish that is moving the British gold reserves to Canada? Was it Canada? Yeah. Yes. Okay, it was Canada. So, so first we think it's supposed to tell you where the gold is, but then we find out it's supposed to mislead you at some points to find to not find the gold, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Because at first they thought that they would find the treasure and they, they will go on treasure hunt, but then they find this message in the book that they are able to decode and the message says... You will never find it. Give up. And that's like for the Germans yeah. or for the other yeah, side yeah, 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 that's yeah. supposed to mislead them. When they finally decipher it, they will not. So they go on this treasure hunt and they find this tunnel in, I think it's like an RAF base. Yeah, some kind of airfield base. thing. And it's near this other place where they went on the trip with missiles, I think, mm-hmm. somehow. Mm-hmm. And they find a hatch and they go inside and they find a picture of a fish and it's 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 like painted over and all mystery ensues and they find a wallet from a German guy. Everything is yeah, like... and uh, the the German guy he was like high up in the Abwehr uh, and and uh, possibly he died there in the tunnel, but missiles possibly also disappeared down that tunnel, uh, like like you know many years after the war. And then when they are in this tunnel, mm-hmm. they get shut in. Suddenly, just the door like closes people. and and they're shut in. Uh, who who's they? By the way, we didn't mention Lucy. We forgot to mention Lucy. <laughs> yeah. So there's Stephen, and I think at this point it's not Lucy yet. It wasn't Lucy. I think it's another. I think there's a bunch of schoolmates, yeah, and they gradually lose interest. So there's schoolmate A, and they go on the chance, and then at some point they start to believe that Stephen is completely bonkers, and they just let mm. him. And then there's next person, the next person, next person. Lucy is the last one that he kind of uses to help yeah, him. Yeah, and Lucy, but Lucy is not a point, schoolmate. It's She's like a... Donna or somebody. I forget. I don't yeah, know. I think I think the one in the tunnel with him is the 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 lesbian who's having trouble with her with her partner wife. Uh, and uh, yeah, and so so she like joins up with him, tries to help him figure out what happened to missiles, and they get shot in the tunnel. Lucy comes in later. She's an assistant librarian who kind of takes pity yes. on him, helps him figure out mm-hmm. technical stuff. As so, they get uh, shut in. They can't go out. They keep screaming and beating the walls and the hatch. And then finally, they are rescued by an old, like an elderly couple. I forgot their names. I, they, I don't think their names are important. <laughs> and those two old people are looking for the golden rabbit. Mm. They are also trying to decipher this code. And then they're never mentioned again, and there's nothing important at all. And I don't know if this even happened. Well, it didn't happen. Uh, it, so, yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's another thing I was... Th- okay, the part it didn't happen, I was kind of getting, but I was trying to find some significance to any of this, so not important. I guess it's, this is my problem with this, I guess. I always try to find some... Like, why, why does this mean? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> is the answer. <laughs> Let it go is the answer. I, I think like if when you get to the end of the book and you are good at solving ciphers, you get kind mm. of a key to going back and reading it and hopefully discovering what Stephen was actually trying to encode within the book. Mm. And and at least that's what I assumed. That's why I didn't worry that so many of these passages and scenes that happen then you you later you find out oh yeah that definitely did not actually happen so why was it there mm. i assume it's because if you are good at decoding stuff and you have the key at mm. the end you can go back and solve the mystery that uh professor max mansfield is supposed to solve yes yes so after this escapade then we uh, find more and more details about the books and they find that the books editions keep changing and they keep changing the encoded messages and they keep like sending messages so they have an interview with the person who is the publisher of the books but he has no idea so they think it's like a middleman encoding decoding the messages and all this and then there is a flashback for the heist maybe or the gang mm, yeah what actually happened well like like so why is he in prison why, why was, he, was in he in prison and like he he did not actually kill the man that they send him to prison mm-hmm. for killing. It was a setup. Uh, the 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 gang in which he grew up, who like the the people who raised him, the they, the the couple once they got like their own children, because before they were taking in these street kids who maybe didn't have ideal situations at home, and they essentially acted as a family. 
And after they had their own children, these became more like, uh, you know, henchmen, essentially. Mm. And, uh, that I, I think I assumed that the, the, when Stephen is talking about how he grew up, his childhood, and uh, what happened with his family and with the gang, that, that is when he's being truthful. Those are, those are, yeah, that's real. what I meant to mention. Yes. So this is actually true. And, he wanted to steal something and then in the process found a load of gold, right? In this heist. I think they wanted to steal the gold. I remember something that they wanted like a box of some valuable jewels yeah. or something. Okay, I, I don't uh, recall that. So I, I believe you, that then, is what happened, yeah. And then they find the, the, the is it pronounced bullion, I think? Mm -hmm. Like the, the gold yeah. bullions, like a bunch of gold. Which they didn't plan to steal, but they stole. Like the the bottom line is, they stole so much more than they were planning to steal. Mm -hmm. They have this wealth treasure. Well, th did they steal it, or did Stephen? Because what what so what happened during the heist was that one of the 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 gang was taken over by the sons of the original founding mm -hmm. founding pair, and uh, Stephen was at that point in time Stephen was quite happy not actually doing crime because he found a steady partner and they, they were quite happy together but there he felt a very strong loyalty to this fam loyalty to this family so when this uh, new boss called him up and he said hey there is like one last one last thing we're going to pull off and I need you to help me with my or, or taking care of my brother because he's like not very re reliable and uh, hmm. like you are somebody I can trust you're going to go in there with uh, my brother and you'll help us pull this off mm -hmm. Stephen feels like he doesn't want to refuse he can't refuse so he goes in and it turns out that what they had actually what the brothers had actually planned was for the brother to kill Stephen but some something happens i think the the brother actually like the brother he was meant he's, to be watching flakes on them yeah he's very very stressed out uh, and he freaks, he freaks out. out so there's actually he can't move. they somehow change the this, this part actually i liked a lot so yeah I okay so, so please tell the story because it's quite foggy it's quite foggy to me i'm not sure what happened exactly I, I like this part that you know i was sure this was actually truth so, <laughs> so i was paying attention and the guy so there are Two people and Steven's partner gets very, very anxious and he doesn't want to even start the heist. And Steven pushes him into it and he does a part of it, but then he gets completely stuck and he can't move. So Steven takes his role and because they have baklavas, like masks on, they don't know who's who. So Steven starts to pretend that he's the other mm -hmm. guy, who I don't remember the name of, you just said. Mm -hmm. And uh, he finishes the heist like in his name, kind of. And during that part, while he's being framed and betrayed, they think it's the other person and they kill Steve successfully as they planned, but they didn't know they switched places. Yeah. So that's why he doesn't get killed. Yeah. So I think, I think that the, the other brothers, the other guy's name is Johnny, I think. I okay. think, yeah, I think yeah, it was yes, Johnny. Johnny. And when I was reading it, I kind of assumed that he was so anxious and he lost his nerve, not because of the heist, but because he didn't want to kill Stephen. He didn't want Stephen to die, and maybe and that's, also that's yeah, what yeah. they were. That's what they were planning. The bosses they were planning to kill Stephen, and he knew it. And yes. so he, I assumed he kind of let it happen like that. It's possible. They don't say it explicitly, but also a part of it. Definitely, why he was so stressed because he knew. Yeah. So that they they he's gonna have, they like yeah. they shoot who they think is Stephen. And mm -hmm. it's actually this this Johnny, and then Stephen. So so Stephen ends up with the whole loot, and he he realizes he was betrayed by the gang, and mm -hmm. then he disappears for a couple of days, and then he's in prison. Mm -hmm. So basically, he he was very lucky, and he got all the. We assume he got all the money and all the gold. Yeah, he 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 won. In this, <laughs> because yeah. the gang wanted to get him, and he's trying to now have not revenge, but yeah. you know, have his way. And so now, I guess reveal what's actually happening. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or not yet? I don't I know. Th I think so. I think that's the the right time. That because like that that's the important part. Like that all the 
a code and running around and are they spies? Mm. That's that's the cover story. The important story is Steve telling his son, Professor Mansfield, about mm. his life, how, why it turned out the way it had, kind of apologizing to him, explaining, mm -hmm. and also telling him where he can find the loot that uh, yes. Stephen actually managed to hide from the gang. Like, that's one of the reasons why he mm. didn't mind all that much being in prison, besides the fact that in prison he learned how to read and uh, came up with this plan mm. of of sharing the loot, not only with the friends who helped him hide it way back mm -hmm. when, but also with his family. Yeah, from this point I was very much in. I, I loved, like this part a lot. The part running around looking for the code, I wasn't very <laughs> uh, excited about. And also for the reason of suspecting it's not even real and it wasn't even real. So it was, it was kind of like, eh. if, if that part was shorter, I would have liked it better. <laughs> But like one thing from that part that I really enjoyed is when Stephen goes in to it's quite at the start I think he goes in to interview the the Twyford scholar that that professor mm. who's like specializes in Twyford and he uh, like they have they have these they have this really funny information where the uh, conversation where the scholar is like uh you know talks in the way that that essays are written about books and uh <laughs> so, you know so oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the you know you you've read all of her canon like oh there's there's guns there in the books <laughs> are they i didn't know it was i thought it was for children or that kind of yeah. uh i, I thought it was, <laughs> it was quite yes. fun it was very creatively written that's true so we skipped some parts, such as that the there's like like twists and turns. So we like said the ending, but that's what you want at the very end. We skipped, for example, like a reveal that how missiles actually got missing was that she got pushed or fell into this hole, into the hedge, I think, into the mm. tunnel, because the children were told that she will stop teaching them, and they were freaking out because they're small children and they wanted to keep their 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 teacher. And uh, they just kept crying, and especially Stephen was completely devastated and crying. And uh, they accidentally pushed her down this hedge, I think, or something yeah. like that happened. But but then we find out that's not true at all. It's not. That's and, like that's uh, that's what Stephen finds out in like quotation mark finds out by the end of the book that mm -hmm. they they you know killed missiles but then professor mansfield after he finishes listening or reading all the transcripts he goes to find out okay where is my father i understand him so much better now where is he i i want to reconnect and he's, mm -hmm. he's gone so he goes to his friends and like yeah his friends they met him once since he left prison which is strange because mm -hmm. he's just read audio transcripts where they like are solving this mystery this code and so he mm -hmm. googles and there is no twyford code there is nothing on the internet about it mm -hmm. at all and so he goes goes on and on and on and then he calls one of the one of his father's friends and he introduces himself as his father and the friend is just, just while she was kind of standoffish in the transcripts, she's extremely friendly in uh, on mm -hmm. the phone with Professor Mansfield and she talks to him in a foreign language and then she becomes mm -hmm. uncertain, asks, okay, who is this actually? And when he introduces himself, <laughs> he, she hangs up. Ooh, yes. mystery. <laughs> Her yes. husband is a plastic surgeon, by the way. Oh, okay. Is that anyway important yeah. in any way? Because it's later implied oh. that Stephen looks completely different. Ah, oh, I missed that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. And I think now that I think about it, that beat up old car in the garage, that's gonna be mm -hmm. the, that's gotta be the car that Steve drove drove away with the loot yes. in, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly the point, yeah. yes. So, so we get into the backstories of all the friends and how he paid them to keep quiet. And then there is a side quest how he gets followed by men in black and he gets beaten up, taken into a van that's not true and it's revealed it's not true. And, and then there is Lucy and super big reveal. She doesn't exist. No, there is no Lucy. And, 
and the best friend who was the only friend who was very nice to him and always supported him <laughs> actually it's just him talking to himself on the audio recordings which conveniently we don't have the audio recordings so we can't tell yeah that it's him talking to himself pretending he's a woman so this part i would be very curious how they did in the audiobook if if the guy reading the the man was reading the man the there are some really woman talented voice, voice actors yeah. who could yeah. absolutely pull that off i think There's, there are too many levels of nonsense because you would be thinking is the actor doing a bad job in impersonating a woman or is he doing a good job because he's doing the same voice with the voice act like, what it would be okay. really difficult <laughs> i think it would be really difficult to do it as an audiobook and also because all of that bullshit stuff that is supposed to be the call then i guess you should mm -hmm. be able to go back and solve and like when you reread which you don't you can't solve an acrostic in an audiobook i don't mm -hmm. think you can or or my brain definitely yeah, 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 doesn't work that way where i would be able yeah, to of course it would be a lot of mental processing so, <laughs> mental thinking yeah. too yes so bottom line is that the father created the cipher code for the son and he hid it he hid parts of the loot which is by the way the le the smallest he, he left the smallest amount for his son he mentions all the other people get more so he buries uh, i guess some gold or some other stuff in eight uh, graveyards that mm. he finds with some coordinates and things like that and then the book ends by him saying okay now you have all the clues so now you go my son and solve it yeah uh, we didn't say the the inspector with the strange name that's the father to I, to send him, him himself yeah i i quite like that like actually the the inspector that professor mansfield mm -hmm. is communicating with, with all the time that's actually his father uh and he that's the only part i could guess yeah yeah <laughs> and, and and like it's I, i figured it was quite quite nice that that the connection they had at the end when he says mm. you might wonder where your old man is now but it don't matter don't look for him You'd not know him now anyway, and the man he was is as good as dead. It's all about you. You're everything he's not. Hmm. The picture of you on his phone. You look as happy as he should have been. As he could have been. Listen, Max, you're doing fine, but I need you to look even closer. There are clues here. Clues that lead to the biggest haul of stolen gold and diamonds in British criminal history. Something that's evaded not just the police, but also the thieves who took it. He wants to set you up for life, like he has those who stuck by him. You've read it all without realizing, go back to the very start. And uh, then he kind of suggests that, okay, maybe maybe let it sit, maybe solve it when you have when you have your own children, you can make like a family game out of it. Uh, because, mm -hmm. you know, Professor Mansfield's got an okay job. Does he actually need all that extra money? He can. That's 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 what I felt was kind of implied in that, in in those messages at the end, like why he didn't leave him the lot. It was because that's not what's important. Spending time with uh, with your with the people who are around you is. Mm -hmm. That's what I figured. Yeah, that's very well said. I agree. The last line I want to say the the acro stick says, "Love is brighter than gold." But it is heavier. Mm, that's nice. Which is a nice ending. Mm. I didn't really... I don't know. I, I don't know how to say. I just kind of saw the code without trying very much. Like I did not see it at all. And now I'm looking at it. And okay, so the your listeners can try if they could solve the acrostics via <laughs> listening to the, to the audiobook. Listen, yeah. objections vanish. Vanish. Exclusion is solved by raising inspiration. Graceful hearts teach effortless rapport. The here and now give our lives direction, because unless truth is told, it stays hidden. Emotions are vivid if echoes remain. You would have to be super, super, <laughs> super able to concentrate wow. if you were able to decipher that from audio. <laughs> yep. But it's a nice That's ending. A nice I, ending, I yeah. think it's like it's everything tight. Everything's tied up. There is no. The things that I couldn't understand were just signals that it's not mm. true. So I'm just dumb because I was trying to find something. Because he said at the end, now you go and solve it. So I felt like there are so many tidbits and points and things that were not true, obviously, that are trying to say something. And I completely missed that. 
And now it's my like task to go back and find it or something. Well, it's like, not your it's... task. It's Professor Mansfield's task. So your task is to know there is a code hidden there for Max to find the gold. And if you're good at solving codes, then you can you can probably solve it. The reason I thought that was that he already knows where the gold is. So there's something else. And now there's going to be like an AR, ARG, what is it? Augmented <laughs> reality game. <laughs> and you have to find the stuff in real life. <laughs> and it's actually in the book. And the book will actually lead you to Edith, whatever her name is. Uh, you know who? And in her book, there's going to be something. And it's going to be all like a mindfuck on a different level. So that's what I was afraid of. Yeah. That this is going to lead to. But hopefully not. Hopefully that's where the code ends and it's a satisfying ending. Mm. So that's where we should leave it. I think you can kind of pick and choose what you kind of focus on when you read the when you read mm -hmm. the book. I enjoyed that personal story quite a lot of how he how he grew up, what were his roots, and then the the, the afterward where Janice Hallett says that like fifty percent of UK prisoners struggle to read or are completely illiterate. Like mm. that's a that's a statistic and you're like, wow. I didn't know. Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> So he learned to read and write so hard that he made up a whole history of codes mm. and <laughs> made up a whole story about it. Yeah, he actually he, he yeah. does say that in one of those last messages to, to Max where he's like, I learned to I never read as a child, so I wrote you a book or something. Yeah, yeah, I remember that part. It was very, very nice, very nicely yeah. said. So I love the ending. I think it really, really satis it's like a very satisfying mm. ending. But I didn't like the execution, like so much yeah. about the code. There wasn't anything to get invested in. I wasn't really sure who, what anybody wants mm. and why, and I wasn't really sure what I'm supposed to be getting out of this, other than the background of the characters, which don't even exist at some point. So I was like, well, why are we doing this? <laughs> Just <laughs> give me something to, you know, there's no hook, mm. kind of. Like, the only thing that kind of keeps you interested is, like, what is this about? But, of course, you want to know what it is about. <laughs> so, but, yeah, it's it's. I, I think I think we maybe didn't reveal all of what happens in the book so even now after hmm. you've listened to our kind of jumbled up explanations and retelling <laughs> yeah. you you might still enjoy reading that and discovering the insanity for yourself because it is quite crazy when you just get into mm -hmm. the story and some things really don't make sense because th there might be a moment where you find out that this character like something quite quite final happens to him or quite dangerous happens to him and the next moment according to the transcript he's completely fine and the characters who mm. vit who who witnessed this you know stressful situation they act like it never happened so so you're like okay well what what the fuck is up with that <laughs> <laughs> but then you discover that yeah, like that. I I think the way I understood it is that all of these inconsistencies and things that don't quite make sense, they are there to not make sense. Mm. That's that's what they're for, and possibly also because code. I don't know. Mm. I I didn't go back yes, and look for yes. a code because I'm shit at that. But hopefully, you <laughs> should be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's actually also very nice. I was uh, kind of afraid that you would have to do it yourself. But at some point in the book, they give you parts of the book and they highlight what you should see in mm. it. So you don't have to do it yourself. So that's also kind of nice that you can just relax and see what it yeah, was. Yeah, at the end. So you get the answer clearly at the end, which is very, very nice. I was I was sure that I, when I opened this book, that's what, that was my oh boy moment with all this list of the code, that... Uh, there would be like pictures and maps and different kinds of media and photographs and there would be different people talking about it and I was sure there was a chapter like the guy gets the audio transcripts mm. and then there is audio transcripts batch one and I was sure after batch one there would be a different person looking at it and then it would be like a photograph or something. No, it's just audio batch one, two, three, four, five, seven. Uh -huh. And that's it. Yeah, and, and and I don't know if I'm disappointed about it or if I'm happy about it, but uh, I was surprised that it's just 
this it's, and there isn't any other. I think like very often media. books like books like this, they kind of work like magic tricks work, where if you go in to see a, a, a like a ma- magic show and the magician just pulls off something amazing and you're like you're happy that he fooled you you're happy that like mm. oh yeah i did not notice anything at all but if you go in wanting to work out how the trick happened and and yes. then then you're going to be really angry by the end because that fucker fooled you and <laughs> and you don't know how he did it right yes. so i Th- that's the attitude you have to assume with this book. You're like... I had definitely the wrong attitude, <laughs> but I still wasn't angry. Still liked it. So that says something good about the good. book. That's good. <laughs> yeah. And I want to say thanks. I would have never read this otherwise. And it's definitely one of the most creative detective stories and definitely belongs on this Mind Duck okay, podcast. Okay, good, good. Definitely a multi-level Mind Duck. It was experienced on my part. I'm, I'm <laughs> glad. I hope Conspiracy for of, of Truths also excites you in this way. <laughs> 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 that 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 it, that it <laughs> is like this strange and and wonderful and unusual. Yeah, you definitely find stuff that's not the usual kind of book. And thanks again for recording. I am very glad to have read this. I didn't enjoy reading it as much as I hoped, <laughs> but I enjoyed the ending a lot, and I like talking about it a lot. And the more we talk about it, the better it works. Uh, together like we always say on this podcast we always kind of find if the book's actually good because if you talk about it for a while you start finding all the problems all the seams or you can start to find that it's actually you know works well together put together thought out thoroughly so this one there is nothing wrong about it and everything's clever and well thought out I, i think it's a it's a great book just for a different, for a specific kind of reader, <laughs> not for everybody. Be be a fish, go with the flow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you for having me again. Thanks.